Hey everyone, welcome back to our series on the 10 most commonly missed concepts on the MCAT. Today, our topic is galvanic and electrolytic cells. The contents of this video that goes along with it, as well as the nine other most commonly missed concepts can be found at mcatselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. My name is Ellery Schlingman. I'm one of the tutors at MCAT Self Prep, and I'm here today to guide you through our topic. Let's get into it. So first we wanna cover just some oxidation and reduction basics. The most important of course is our lovely acronym OIL RIG, meaning oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of electrons. As we can see here in our reaction um, expression, we have copper, which is being oxidized and silver, which is being reduced. And we can tell of course, because of the change in oxidation numbers. Right, copper's oxidation number is going from zero to plus two, meaning that it has lost those electrons with negative charges, while our silver has gone from a plus one to zero, meaning that it has gained that negative charge associated with an electron. So super quick overview of that, we're gonna hop right into our cells. The first one we're gonna talk about are galvanic cells, also known as voltaic cells. And the purpose of these cells is to use energy from a spontaneous reaction to do something. So that can be to power an electric car, that can be to spin a turbine, anything that is harnessing the energy from a spontaneous reaction to do something is gonna be using some kind of galvanic cell. And because of that, you can think of these cells kind of like a battery. In this case, and we're gonna compare this to, to the electrolytic cell. We have our anode, which is going to be negative, and our cathode, which is gonna be positive. The way that I like to remember this, because in my mind, galvanic cells are kind of the default because they're spontaneous, is our cathode has a T, just like positive, has is a plus sign. So that's kind of how I remember that the cathode in, in a galvanic cell is always positive, and the anode, an meaning not, is negative. That's gonna flip in our electrolytic cells, you'll see in a moment, but that's just kind of how I like to remember it. The last thing I do wanna mention as well is that yellow salt bridge that you can see in our diagram is actually necessary in order for our reaction to keep occurring at the same efficiency or at the same rate. If we didn't have the salt bridge, we would have ions start to build up on both sides of our cell uh, and we wouldn't have as efficient of a reaction because it will no longer favor the spontaneous forward reaction that's occurring. So next we're gonna hop right into electrolytic cells. The purpose of these cells is to actually use energy to drive a non-spontaneous reaction. So often the reason that somebody might wanna do that is to generate a metal or some kind of substance that might be valuable or that they wanna use later on in uh, some other reaction. Here, as I mentioned before, we see that it is flipped. So now our cathode is actually negative and our anode is going to be the positive electrode. The important thing to note too about electrolytic cells is because a non-spontaneous reaction is occurring, you are going to need a voltage source to power that reaction. Because of course, if it's non-spontaneous, it's not gonna occur on its own. You need to input some kind of voltage or energy in order to drive it forward. So that's, those are a couple of big differences between our two types of cells. But what we're gonna do right now is compare them side by side. You may notice that our um, charge or electron flow is on the image occurring in two different directions. But if you look down at the actual cells, it is always gonna be going from anode to cathode. And that is because no matter the type of cell that you're dealing with, reduction is always going to occur at the cathode and oxidation is always gonna occur at the anode. Whether you have a positive cathode, a negative cathode, or vice versa with the anode, this is always going to be the case. And of course, we can remember that through our lovely mnemonic, red, cat, and ox, meaning reduction always happens at the cathode, oxidation always happens at the anode. And aren't those guys just so cute? Love that. So that was like a really fast overview of our two types of cells that you'll encounter on the MCAT. I do wanna jump into one last topic very closely related to these guys, and that is reduction potential. 
So reduction potential is just the tendency for an element to be reduced or how likely it's going to be reduced. And you often see them compared in these reduction potential charts or half reaction charts that you see on the right. Now I've put our reaction from the beginning of the video back up top there just so we can compare these two um, half reactions and see which one is favorable. If we look on our chart on the right, we will see that the reduction of copper has a reduction potential of 0.34, but our reduction of silver has a reduction potential of 0.8. So silver has a greater chance of being reduced or greater tendency of being reduced. Therefore, the reduction of silver, which is occurring in this forward reaction, is gonna be spontaneous. It is more likely to happen. If we try to force the back reaction for this, um, for this reaction equation, we are going to have a non-spontaneous reaction. So if we want to link this back to our discussion about our galvanic and electrolytic cells, our top, our spontaneous reaction might be used in a, in a galvanic cell to power some type of process or vehicle or something of the sort while our bottom non-spontaneous reaction would have to be part of an electrolytic cell that has a voltage source attached to it in order to drive the non-spontaneous reaction. So just to bring those two together for you. So again, super quick, super high yield for what you really do need to know for the MCAT. One last note I wanna make is pay really close attention to reduction potentials. There are quite a few tricky AMC questions that are related to this. You'll definitely see them in your practice and they may come up on test day. So it's really important to have a really solid foundation understanding of these cell concepts as well as reduction potential. Of course, you can see a breakdown of exactly which AMC questions ask um, about this topic uh, on our website in this lesson on the 10 Most Commonly Missed Concepts course, or there are a lot of other sources out there for you to use. With that, I just want to do a quick overview of what we covered today. We, of course, started with some oxidation reduction basics, oil rig, a little reminder about what oxidation numbers are. If you need a brush up, um, feel free to utilize some of the other resources that we have available on our website for you there. We also discussed galvanic or voltaic cells, electrolytic cells, and the difference between the two. And of course, a quick discussion about reduction potentials. So as always, I just want to thank you all for spending some time with me and learning a little bit about this really cool but often missed concept on the MCAT. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye. If you um, are on YouTube with us, this is where I leave you. If you are interested in seeing the rest of this video or in checking out the other videos related to the nine um, other most commonly missed concepts as well as lenses and mirrors, I highly recommend that you check them out on mcatselfprep.com. But if not, um, I wish you very well with your day and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.